to refugees can be tremendously destabilizing to the new countries in which they go. They can change the politics. They can change the demographic balance. And we've seen in the Middle East in the past how the presence of refugees can create cycles of conflict and create conflict in new countries, in part because of how the refugees change politics. Um, also, these weakened states can often be a base for terrorist groups. Uh, one thing that security services of the Arab world often did quite well was imprison and arrest radicals who used anti-American violence. Uh, again, you may see security services purged, but in any event, you're going to see security services focusing on other issues other than terrorism. The greatest threat to regimes now in uh, many countries has nothing to do with terrorism and a lot to do with opposition forces on the other side. So if you look at Syria, for example, the Syrian regime is tremendously concerned about democratic dissenters and less concerned, I would say, about the radicals that it had focused on in the past. And as a result, you may see freedom of operation grow. Um, also, though, and perhaps the biggest impact, is that as civil wars become widespread, there's, there are reasons that neighbors intervene. At times, they're afraid. At times, they see opportunities. And as a result, what starts as a local problem becomes a regional problem. And so it sucks in neighbors, and these neighbors may have strong American interests. Um, to conclude very briefly, um, what can the United States do? Um, of course, the United States, its NATO allies, other countries, uh, can intervene and help one side win. We saw this in Libya. Uh, to me, that's a very unusual confluence of events led to the Libyan intervention, and I'd, I'd recommend all of you read Akram al-Turk's chapter on Libya for a great description. But beyond that, um, there is a question of what U.S. forces will do, or excuse me, what the United States can do if it's not going to intervene militarily. Um, and because this raises a huge question, right? We saw this in Libya, we see it today, which is um, after victory, what is the international community's role? What is America's role? Uh, Ken mentioned the importance of aid. Uh, that's extremely important. But in countries like Libya, the challenge is even more than just infusions of capital. There are questions of creating institutions, healing wounds. And here, the United States, others can play a role, but it's extremely difficult. However, I think the biggest issue is political. Uh, there is, I would say, no eagerness on either side of the political aisle for further intervention in the Middle East. Uh, the United States is leaving Iraq as quickly as possible. Uh, in Afghanistan, there are plans for a drawdown. Uh, there has been no appetite for serious engagement in Libya after Gaddafi's fall. And so with this political dynamic in mind, the role of the United States, which has seen its stature diminish in the region, um, is actually going to be somewhat limited. And often the United States is going to be left with not solving the problems, but managing the problems. So it'll be managing unrest. It'll be trying to limit spillover. It'll be trying to care for refugees. Um, and perhaps the biggest role the United States can play is actually trying to contain these conflicts and stop neighbors from intervening. And so, again, this is, I'm going to say, a 50% solution. It's probably not even that. But I think U.S. policy is going to be driven in part by political dynamics that are going to limit involvement rather than broader questions of what is the best thing the United States can do for the region.